Hi, in this video I will show you how to design a part like this in plasticity and how to split that part into two halves. If you haven't subscribed to this channel yet, make sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any new content. I will start a new project in plasticity. We will begin by creating a circle whose center will be at the origin of the coordinate system. Select the circle drawing tool and specify the origin of the coordinate system as the center point of the circle. Now we define the diameter of the circle. To dimension the circle, press the tab key and enter 40 millimeters as the diameter of the circle. Next we will create more circles. To activate the circle drawing, use the keyboard shortcut shift plus C as the center of the circle, select the origin of the coordinate system and enter 80 millimeters as the diameter of the circle, which means press tab and enter the diameter value. Now switch to face selection mode, which means press the three key on the keyboard or click this icon. Select this area and add an extrusion of 30 millimeters, which means press the D key, enter 30, press enter to confirm and enter again to finish this command. Now we will create more circles. Press Shift plus C and select this point as the center of the circle. For the diameter of the circle, you can enter 40 millimeters or simply click a point on this circle. Again, Shift plus C, place the center of the circle here and enter 60 millimeters as the diameter of the circle. So we press Tab, enter 60 and hit Enter. We have created a circle. Now we will create the geometry that we will extrude this circle along to create the shape I showed you at the beginning. To do this, set the side view, click here on this cube. Now select the line drawing tool. You can activate line drawing with the keyboard shortcut Shift plus A. As the start of the line, select this point. Create a line 100 millimeters long along the z-axis. Specify the direction of the line, press the tab key and enter 100. We will continue this line. We will create another segment of this line. If you press the enter key, you will simply finish drawing this line. We will have to reactivate the line drawing command to create the next segment. But if you click the left mouse button, we can continue drawing the line. We have drawn a line of a specific dimension and we can continue drawing the line. Now we will draw this line like this and also draw this line 100 millimeters long, which means I press the tab key, enter 100 and press enter. We have something like this. Now we will add a fillet at this corner. Switch to vertex selection mode. Click this icon or press the one key on the keyboard. Select this vertex and activate the fillet command. By pressing the B key on the keyboard, now we will add a fillet. You can add a chamfer or a fillet and we will add a fillet with a radius of 50 millimeters, which means we press the D key, enter 50 and press enter. Press enter again to confirm. We close the view of this plane. And now we will add an extrusion of this sketch along this line. To do this, switch to face selection mode which means press the three key on the keyboard, select this area. Next, select the sweep command. This is the command. We can activate it by clicking this icon or using the keyboard shortcut Shift plus P. This area has been selected. Now we select this geometry as the path along which we will extrude this geometry. And we have something like this. Click OK to confirm. Note that we have two solids, they are not combined. In a moment we will join these solids, but now we will add a copy of this solid so that this solid is also in this place. For this purpose, we will use the alternative duplicate command. I press the F key, and here we have this command. We can activate it by using the keyboard shortcut Control plus D, or simply selecting this command from the list. I will use the keyboard shortcut Control plus D or Command plus D. Now we define the reference point. Click a point on the upper face of this solid. It is the center point of this solid. Note that this solid appears to be attached to the cursor. When you hover over any place on this solid, 
This reference point can be placed in the selected position. We hover it to this spot, and at this moment it will be copied like this. Now, if you press the F key, this solid will be flipped and we will place it here. Click the left mouse button, and now click the right mouse button to confirm it. Press Escape to finish this command. This way, we have created something like this, and now these are individual solids. We will combine these solids into one solid. We switch to Solid Selection Mode, I press the 4 key on the keyboard, or we can do it by clicking this icon. I use a window selection to select all solids. I activate the boolean operation, the operation that allows us to combine solids. I press the Q key. We have several different operations available, but the operation for combining solids is the union operation, which we can activate by pressing the Q key on the keyboard. Thus I press the Q key again and press enter to confirm. Now we have one single solid. I will show you how to split this solid in half. First, I will create a copy of this solid. I press Ctrl C, Ctrl V. Here we have two solids, and I will move the copy of this solid to, for example, this location. I click OK and turn off the visibility of this solid. Next, I select all flat geometries and turn off the visibility of those geometries. Now I will create geometry that will be the cutting geometry. I will set the side view of this solid, and here I select the line drawing tool and draw a line like this. This line will be the cutting line. I select the solid, press the C key on the keyboard to activate the cut command, and then as cutting geometry, I choose this line. Of course the cutting geometry can be any line created anywhere because as you can see, it will simply create a cutting plane that, in this case, passes through the center of the solid. This will allow us to divide the solid into two halves. I click OK to confirm. One half is selected. I activate the Move command, press the G key on the keyboard, and move one half. I click OK to confirm. In this way, we have created something like this. I will turn off the visibility of the cutting line and turn on the visibility of the original solid. This way, you can create such elements in plasticity. I will show you one more thing. As you can see, we have these lines on the solids. These lines should not interfere in any way, but if you would like to remove these lines, you can do it by switching to face selection mode, which means uh, I press the 3 key on the keyboard. Then with the shift key, I select these three faces and press the J key to merge these three faces into one face. As you can see, no geometry has been created here. We still have individual solids. But now this solid looks in such a way that this face is a single face. The same can be done on the inner face. We can select in such a way that I press the Alt key and select one face. All faces that are connected to this face have been selected. Then I press the J key, and we have one single surface here. Sometimes we can merge such faces like this. However, if I now try to do this on this solid and select these three faces, pressing the J key, we cannot perform that merging here. I will try to do it like this by selecting this face and this face. I press the J key, and we also cannot do that here. Here on these halves, it worked. Here on this solid, it did not work. I don't know why this is the case, but sometimes merging such faces can be useful. As for the cutting geometry, here I used the z-axis to create such a cutting line, but we can create such a cutting line anywhere. I select this face and press the spacebar to create a construction plane here. I can also create this line like this. This line can also be a cutting line. I select this solid, press the C key, and select this line as cutting geometry. In this way, we can also cut this solid. We don't need to place the solid for cutting at the origin of the coordinate system. If we want to divide any solid, we can do it anywhere in the working area. We just need to create the cutting geometry. If you would like to divide this solid differently, you can also do that. We simply create different cutting geometry. We can do it in any way. I have two solids here, so with the Shift key, I select these two solids, press the C key, 
and select this geometry as cutting geometry. Note how this will now be divided. I click OK. And we have several different pieces of this solid. So this is how it works in plasticity. Thanks for watching. Please check out other videos on this channel and subscribe to this channel.